Hello there. During this second session on digital imaging using CCDs, I'm going to look at some of the uses we have for CCDs. One example is the digital camera you can see in the picture here. And also um, think about some issues to do with resolution and how technology has overcome that to allow the brilliant images we see around us today. So, some uses for CCDs. Well, straight away we recognize that digital video cameras, cameras, and even mobile phones all make use of this technology. Okay. All of these will have inbuilt CCDs, uh, which allow us to capture images. Uh, we also have more practical uses as well. Uh, dental and medical uh, x-ray imaging uh, can uh, use CCDs as well, which means that um, one great feature is that for the first time uh, metal, medical x-rays can be collected, can be digitally transferred so people from around the world could look at one patient almost simultaneously rather than having to wait for an x-ray image to be delivered and passed around. So this is a great uh, tool. CCDs are also used on um, telescopes. So the Hubble Space Telescope as an example has a number of CCDs on board, each one designed to look at different areas of the electromagnetic spectrum and therefore to be able to tell us different information about the universe around us. So there's some uses. I'm now going to talk about digital camera resolution. Okay. So the amount of detail on a camera uh, can capture is called the resolution and um, it is measured in the number of pixels which are available. Okay, so the more pixels available, uh, the better the images. So that means uh, it can capture and large images can be uh, produced without it becoming grainy because there's that resolution. Now there's some more information, uh, details which I'll give you now about how we get the high quality of images we can from CCDs. So first of all, we want as many pixels as possible. That seems to make sense. Uh, if we now compare uh, a film versus CCD image, so here we had 140 minute exposure on a photographic film and then less time exposure on a CCD. And here we can see there's way more detail in the CCD image. Now why is that? Okay. Considering that we're recognizing that we're converting this from analog to digital, so normally we would think we'd be losing quality at some stage. Now, the reason we're not losing quality is because of something known as the uh, CDs have a, a higher quantum efficiency than film. Now, what this is how quantum efficiency relates to. Okay. So, uh, quantum efficiency is about how much information can be collected uh, relative to how much uh, light energy comes in the first place. And as we can see here, if we look at the table here, okay, the quantum efficiency on a, a good professional CCD is a much, much higher than what we find with a photographic film or an amateur CCD. And this quantum efficiency uh, tells us the ratio between the number of photoelectrons uh, divided by the number of photons times 100. Okay. So it's basically giving us some idea about uh, how many electrons are produced for each photon which is coming down. Now, the higher that number is, so the larger that number is, then this means that for every photon uh, we get more electrons, which tells us that um, it's going to respond to much, much fainter signals. Okay, so you're going to need less light to be able to get that same detail. And if it's exposed over the same amount of time, it means that you can collect more details, which we saw in the pictures beforehand. So the quantum efficiency is very, very important. Um, another feature. So look at this picture here. How many stars do you see? Probably maybe one. This is a two pixels wide image. Here, I have a six pixels wide image, and I can start to maybe distinguish that there might be two stars here. Now, if I have a 450 pixel wide image, suddenly I can see so much more detail. Okay, now what we're trying to say here is that the number of pixels 
uh, as well as giving us resol uh, giving overall resolution, it allows us to be able to resolve what's in the image as well. And here, because of the number of pixels, it allows us to distinguish between one bright spot and another bright spot. So this resolution, my graph here, I've got six pixels, seven pixels, and eight pixels. Let me just go back there. So what I'm saying is that um, it would only be at eight pixels that I'll be able to start to resolve there being two objects or two points in that image. So we spoke about resolution before when we're looking at, let's say, uh, a pair of headlights at a car approaching from a long distance. There's a certain point when you can resolve the two separate headlights. So resolution here is down to the fact that you must have images which are at least two pixels apart for you to be able to resolve them clearly. If they're not two pixels apart, it becomes just a blur. Uh, another feature which we want to think about here is magnification. So magnification is equal to the image height divided by the object height. Uh, and when we're specifically talking about CCDs, uh, we're talking about the length of the image divided by the length of the image on the CCD. Okay, So that gives us uh, the amount of magnification which takes place, how much bigger it looks. So if the image has a low magnification and only covers a small number of pixels, the image quality will be low. Uh, so we want as high a magnification as possible and that maintains a, a higher quality image. Final note here. Uh, we've been talking about photons and how photons will, uh, when placed or fired upon a CCD, will allow photoelectrons to be emitted. At no point have we mentioned about how we can identify different colors. And there's a trick to this, okay? We're actually uh, not able to distinguish the exact wavelength of the photons which is entering. However, by having a set of filters over the pixels, it means that if we look at what type of light or how much light came through onto each one of the different pixels, it means that we're at a later stage be able to put together and introduce the color image. So filtering is the way forward and what it does if we combine details from pixels with different filters on, it allows us to interpret exactly what color has been produced. So that is how uh, we can think about the quality of CCD images and how they're used in today's world. I hope it's useful.